Hello, I welcome you all in this course on steam and gas power systems. Today we will discuss about the energy losses in steam turbines. Because no machine is 100 percent efficient, even in the heat engines all the processes are ideal processes, the efficiency is not 100 percent, right. So is the case in the steam turbine. The steam turbine in addition to the, uh, the thermodynamic efficiency there are certain losses also and the losses takes place in different stages. So, we will take up uh, the losses as internal losses, some of the external losses and we will carry out one worked example on the losses in steam turbines. Regarding the internal losses in steam turbines, they are dependent upon the state of steam while flow, flowing through the steam turbine. So, state of steam is important when it is flowing through the steam turbine, right. <coughs> we will start with the first loss which takes place when steam enters the steam turbine that is regulating wall. Radi regulating wall or steam stop wall or main stop wall, it is main stop wall, it is an integral part of the turbine, right. So, <coughs> we will start with regulating wall losses. As we know, any fluid which passes through any wall, in fact, is passes through a throttling process. So, on a H phi diagram or enthalpy entropy diagram, if I want to show the, uh, the throttling process, it is a constant enthalpy process. This is pressure P1 and this is pressure P2. It is a constant enthalpy process but the pressure reduces at that changes the state of the steam also. This may happen that, that the steam which is entering the turbine is saturated after throttling it becomes super heated steam. Now, regarding the expansion, the expansion of steam is taking place suppose from state 1 to state 2 expansion in ideal case when there is no throttling at all. But since the throttling is taking place the available energy will be like this and this will be loss of energy during the throttling process, right. And this pressure and this is a pressure loss also because suppose here it is 10 bar, now steam may be entering may be 9.8 bar, right. So, when the steam is entering at 9.8 bar, it will be expanded to this is a constant pressure line. So, now we are getting work out of this, earlier we are getting work out of this. So, definitely output it will be affecting the output of the turbine also. So, it is considered as a loss and uh, the magnitude this delta P r this is pressure loss in regulating ball is 3 to 5 percent of P 1, P 1. So, in a well designed wall it is 3 percent and in, in a poorly designed wall it can go to 5 percent, 6 percent or 7 percent. So, range remains between 3 to 5 percent. So, that is the first energy loss when steam moves into a turbine. Now, the second loss is now after entering the turbine. Second is moving blade loss. Energy loss also takes place inside the nozzles, we will take consider them later on. So, now we will focus on a moving blade loss. Now, in moving blade loss, first is let us take a nozzle, uh, a nozzle and through this nozzle there are there are a number of blade passages. Right. 
nozzle has certain wall thickness, right? And steam is flowing in this direction, and this wall does not exist in this annular space. This wall does not exist in annular space. So, there is a mixing of streams here and this mixing causes turbulence. Wherever turbulence is caused, the losses will take place. So, here because this is a smooth channel, this is a smooth passage, uniform mixing is there, eddies are formed, eddies are formed at the edge of the nozzle and due to this formation of eddies or mixing of two streams, some losses takes place, <laughs> right. In addition to this, now the, the steam is uniformly uh, spread in this annular space. This is the space between the nozzle exit and the blade inlet. There is a clearance. So, in this clearance when the steam enters, due to wake in this uh, position because there is no steam coming from here, it is steam is either coming from this side or coming from this side and they are mixing here, this causes certain amount of losses. The next step, from this passage steam enters here. Now, blade edge, it obstructs the flow of steam, right. When obstruction is there, in any flow when obstruction is there, right, when obstruction is there losses are bound to happen. So, blade has to be designed in such a manner, the design blades has to be designed in such a manner that these losses are minimum these loss because, because we cannot make them 0. There have to be some losses, but these losses this is by a trailing edge of the nozzle or at the entry of the blades they are minimized to 0. These losses also ref are reflected when we have solved the numerical in carry over coefficient phi. So, this, this phi has always value less than 1 it is approximately 0.75 normally it is 0 0.75 to 0.8 and that is due to this reason only. Now, this loss is when, when the, the steam is entering in the blades, it is known as impinging loss. So, this is trailing edge loss, trailing edge, edge loss and second one is, imp, sorry, this is impinging loss, impinging loss of energy. Now, in steam turbines, the blades are mounted on a shaft, right, and nozzles are used in an impulse turbine, the nozzles are used for supplying steam to the turbine blades, right. So, this is a nozzle. And steam is coming through this nozzle and we will take a turbine blade which is fixed on on a rotor this is also this is fixed on a rotor right and steam and this line is also we will lose it. Now, steam is entering this blades from this direction there has to be some clearance between the uh, end of this blade and the housing. I mean this clearance has to be there. Normally, this clearance is of the order of uh, 300 microns or 0. Point how much? 3 millimeters, right. But there has to be some clearance. So, this clearance is minimized. This clearance is minimized because what is going to happen? This is annular space, this is annular space. So, when the steam enters the annular space, it will try to move in this direction and it will flow past the blade. So, this part of the steam will not take part any part in power generation, it is wastage or leakage loss. So, this flow of steam in this clearance is wastage of energy. Now, this has to be prevented. 
the one way of preventing is so in, especially in the impulse reaction turbine if the react degree of reaction is high this the steam is sucked back or another way of doing it is just increase the blade height just increase the blade height so blade height is increased sorry blade height is increased when the blade height is increased there is going to be partial admission of steam in this region or wake will be created now this wake will suck back the steam so steam which was passing over this blade between the clearance between the housing and the blade will be sucked back in the passage of the blade so that is how we can prevent leakage still i mean with the, with the help of these arrangements also the leakage cannot be completely it can be minimized or it can be reduced but it can be it cannot be completely eliminated so this arrangement can be made for or what is being done in the, in the steam turbines some constriction some padding is provided they are known as constrictions here we will discuss them in later on them later on and the uh, the flow of steam or the leakage of steam is prevented this we will discuss uh, later on now another one is blade friction losses blade friction losses when steam is flowing past the blades i mean if the profile type blades in case of impulse turbine or aerofoil type of blades in case of uh, uh, impulse reaction turbine the surface of the blade it offers the resistance to the flow or friction between the steam and the blade surface this also results in loss of energy delta h or loss of energy right so this is known as blade friction losses so the loss is due to turning of jet when jet or or, or, or the steam jet when it flows past the blades so there is a impulse turbine and steam jet is moving over the blades so it is changing direction right now it is not a i mean thin line the entire steam is flowing in this passage some part of the steam is in the vicinity of the some part of the steam is in the vicinity of blade surface this is blade suppose so part of the steam is in the vicinity of the blade surface part of this steam will flow like this part of the steam will flow like this because when we do the analysis we take very ideal case but in actual practice the path covered from this point to this point will be different for different volumes of the steam that is one thing second thing is when there is a change in direction losses are bound to happen in actual practice and in in this case the change in direction is pi minus blade inlet angle minus plus blade inlet outlet angle so higher the value of this inlet and outlet angles sorry lower the value of this higher the change in the direction right and more will be the losses in blade passage <coughs> shrouding is also done in the uh, shrouding losses in uh, uh, turbines shrouding is done now the, what is shrouding shrouding is suppose if we look at the end view of the turbine i am just giving you the schematic view it is going to be like this i mean there are number of blades attached to the rotor and the rotor is moving with certain rotational speed 
Now, these blades are tied together with the help of a shrouding and this shrouding also causes interruption in the flow. So, when their shrouding is there, the presence of shrouding, this also contributes towards the losses during flow in a turbine. Third one is disc friction loss. Suppose the fluid which is the, that is steam, it is viscous fluid, it is, a, it is not a non viscous fluid. So, it is a viscous fluid flowing over the blades. So, the resistance to flow will be offered, it is known as disc friction law, losses. So, these losses will also be there when there is a flow of a steam over uh, uh, the surface of the blades. Another type of loss is windage loss, windage losses. Now, what happens in high pressure turbine, especially in the high pressure area, especially in the impulse turbine, th there are limited number of nozzles, right. And there are limited number of nozzles and all the blade passages are not ex directly exposed to the steam which is coming from the nozzle. In some of the blades, there is a partial admission. This partial admission in the blades is known as windage losses, right. And we will start with the disc friction loss. So, disc friction loss, there is a formula for disc friction losses in a steam turbine. Uh, power loss disc friction is equal to m delta h loss disc friction is equal to C d square u by 1000 cube rho kilowatt. This is empirical relation, right. So, <laughs> this is and where log C by 0 0.735 is equal to 1.277 minus 0 0.2 log d u rho by mu. So, from here, if you know the diameter of the turbine, peripheral velocity and rho, rho is u by v 1, then we can get the value of c provided we have the value of mu. Mu is a function of temperature viscosity is always function of temperature and for a steam it is taken as 1.173 T plus 40.68 into 10 to power minus 7 Pascal seconds. Now, here you can see that uh, with temperature viscosity is increasing because with temperature if you increase the temperature the viscosity of the liquid will fall but viscosity of the gases will increase. Now, here in the case of steam, the viscosity of steam will increase, it is a vapor with, with, with rise in temperature. So, if you know the temperature of entering steam, we will we'll get the value of viscosity. This value of viscosity can be put here and we will get the value of C and this value of C can be put here. V will get the power loss in this friction. Okay. Now, another case is blade windage losses, blade windage loss, the blade windage, windage I have already explained you. Okay. So, in, in this case, <laughs> then again P windage losses is equal to lambda 1.07 d square plus 0.61 z 1 minus epsilon L raised to power 1.5 d u by 100 cube it is difficult to remember, but, but this is a also a, 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 a uh, empirical relation, 
where lambda for air, uh, I mean this is a generalized equation. So, for air it is uh, 1, for superheated steam, superheated, it is 1.1 to 1.2 and uh, uh, saturated steam equal to 1.3. So, for, for 3 different conditions lambda 1, 1.1 to 1.2 is super heat. Our natural steam turbines come in this range. So, lambda 1, lambda can for steam turbines because the vapor is always superheated while entering the steam turbine, we can always comfortably take 1.15 average of this. Now, this is the mean diameter, z is the number of velocity stages. So, number of stages will be suppose there is a 10 stage turbine, so z is equal to 10, it is a 20 stages turbine, z is equal to 20. Epsilon, epsilon is uh, clearance, it is for the clearance, L is blade height, L is in centimeters, this has to be remembered, otherwise you will be getting altogether different results. D is the diameter of rotor, U is the peripheral velocity, U is rho is the velocity ratio and this will give you the energy loss in windage. In clearance losses, because in turbine there is a clearance at two places. So, let us take a case when there is a impulse reaction turbine. So, in, in impulse reaction turbine the nozzles are fixed in the casing and blades are fixed on the rotor. So, these are the blades and this one is nozzle, right. And these blades are fixed on a shaft. There are two places where leakage can be take place. These places are this clearance and this clearance. So, in order to prevent leakage, constrictions are provided. Constrictions are nothing but obstructions to the, suppose this if you take it here, then this is something like obstruction to the flow, they are known as constrictions. Okay. So, in fact, a sort of throttling will take place through this and slowly, gradually uh, the pressure will reduce or we can have different configuration, we can step type also step type also constriction to offer more uh, uh, resistance or dual space like this. We can have different type of configuration not like this. Like this, we can have different type of configuration, but they should not obstruct the movement of the blades if the constrictions are obstructing and they are made of soft material. So, if they come in contact with the blades, they will wear out. What happens if you make closing casing instead of big putting constriction, if you are putting uh, casing here and if blade strikes the casing, the entire tur turbine will be damaged. But constrictions are made of soft material. So, even if the blade edge comes in contact with the constriction, it will wear off the constriction that is it. Now, if we draw enthalpy entropy diagram, suppose there are uh, uh, 5 constrictions. So, dwell So, there is going to be, suppose constriction is 5, so number of dwells will be 4, dwell means the gaps will be 4 and in the first, suppose this is A, 
right and expansion takes place in this constriction suppose this is a throttling or expansion takes place in this case the velocity will increase but when the steam enters here this turbulence because here the velocity is increased but it is confined here again the pressure rises it's not pressure rises yes the energy is regained energy is regained and we get we get a state b that is state b and that, that is another pressure this is another pressure p1 let us say this is p2 at state b again the expansion will take place and then again the energy will be regained and then it is p3 and this is how the pressure keeps on reducing and at the last stage you will get the final pressure that is p2 p p z u b whatever it is p z now we will do a worked example for regarding the leakage of energy loss in a steam turbine the first stage wheel running at 1500 rpm of a 20 megawatt steam turbine is a single row wheel having mean diameter of 2.1 meters. So, I will put down the values here n is equal to 1500 rpm and the power is 20 megawatt mean diameter d is 2.1 meters. The condition of a steam in first stage is as follows pressure is 1750 kilopascal kilopascal or 17.5 bar superheat 110 degree centigrade it is above the saturation temperature degree of superheat a specific volume 0.15 0 0.03 meter cube per kg right the blades are 32 mm long l is equal to 3.2 centimeters and the active zone cover 40 percentage of total circumference at full load calculate power absorbed by the friction. so <coughs> first of all we will take pressure corresponding to this the saturation temperature is 205.71715 degree centigrade. Now, total temperature is going to be 205.715 plus 110, it is going to be 315.715 degree centigrade, or you can round it off to 205.7 because third digit accuracy is not required, right. So, this is the temperature. Now, with the help of this, we can calculate mu. So, mu is 0 0.173 T plus 40.68 into 10 to power minus 7. So, at this temperature, viscosity of the steam is going to be, we will put the value of T from here, sorry, T from here, and then we will get mu is equal to 95.3 into 10 to power minus 7 pascal second. Now, that formula if you remember this log because we need to have the value of c log c by 0.735 is equal to 1.277 minus log u d rho by mu. So, here we have the value of u is equal to pi into d is 2.1 into n is 1500 divided by 60 pi d n. So, pi d is 2.1 is given here right and 1500 is also given here. So, this is d, this is n and the value of u is 165 meters per second. So, value of u will note down here. 165 meters per second mu is also there 95.3 into 10 to power minus 7 pascal second now 
we can calculate the disk friction. The disk friction is now is equal to C D square u by 100 cube into rho and now we have the value of u, we have the value of rho, C is with us, diameter is with us, right. Putting these values here, we will get the disk friction that is 23.4 kilowatt. If you compare the output of the turbine, it is not very high, though in itself 23.4 kilowatt is substantial energy. Now, power in wind, windage is lambda 1.07 d plus 0 0.61 z 1 minus epsilon. L raised to power 1.5 here multiplied by d u by 100 cube multiplied by rho. Now, lambda for superheated steam, we can always take 1.15 d is diameter, what is, what is diameter? Diameter is 2.1 meter. right point 0.6 z z is uh, number of velocity stages so single row wheel having mean diameter so number of velocity stages is one right this epsilon this is partial area where uh, the i mean this is active zone that is 40 to so 40 percent the epsilon is 0 0.4 which is covered by the steam and L is the length of the blade 3.2, D is 2.1, U again is 165, right. If you are putting all these values, the final expression shall come out to be 190 kilowatt. So, this is how with the help of available information for, for a turbine, we can find the disk friction loss and the windage loss in the system. That is all for today. Thank you very much.